Now the proud families living in government housing fearful but fighting back against their aggressive, even violent neighbours. They say they're virtual prisoners in their own homes and they have the vision to prove it. It's a living nightmare. A living nightmare. They're towers of terror subsidised by the taxpayer. No one cares. And if anything happens to me or if I die, it's just going to be a big deal. We're going to take you inside some of Australia's most dangerous housing commission blocks where violent, out-of-control tenants rule and genuine, innocent residents live in fear. Now, the vision we've got, it's quite confronting, just a warning. But it will make you understand why these innocent tenants are so desperate for help. It's absolutely disgraceful. And I, I, I just, I'm at my wit's end. I'm at my wit's end. It's a joke. And the taxpayer, at the end of the day, is the one that's paying for it. Bizarre drug fuel displays, even fire bombings. Why is this happening? And what's being done to try and fix the problem? Because if people are in public housing and they want to rebuild their lives, the last thing they need uh, is to be surrounded or threatened uh, with intimidating and violent behaviour. That's just got to stop. The shirtless man enters an elevator in the Commission Tower early in the afternoon. He's carrying a large stick, and thankfully no one else is in the lift with him. We've blurred his face, but he's wearing an expression of absolute agony. The man brandishes a large butcher's knife and starts hacking at an invisible adversary before contorting in pain and collapsing on the ground, sobbing. The elevator door opens and he stalks off into the corridor. Watch as the tenant in the red jumper starts arguing with a guard at the security desk. The man walks around the side and tries to break through the door and attack the guard. He has no luck and returns to the desk, but not before punching an innocent man who was standing there, filling out a form. The man in the red jumper continues yelling at the security guard before spitting at him. In Melbourne's north, a dispute between Housing Commission residents results in the firebombing of a car. The same Commission development regularly sees ugly arguments like this erupt between tenants. Would you like to live like that? Well, neither do I. That's it in a nutshell. Because they're unpredictable. Melbourne Housing Commission resident Terry Robertson has had enough. If it was raining $100 notes, I'd get hit on the head with a brick with my luck. The disability pensioner lives in a public housing development that caters specifically to the sick and frail. Despite that, Terry and some of his neighbours are constantly being threatened and even assaulted by other tenants. One stage, the former tenant next door, she put a syringe to a woman's throat. I've never struck anything like it. I've had to arm myself. I won't say what with, but I have. You don't know if you're going to go to the letterbox and going to come running out with a pair of scissors or a big carbon knife. Through it all, he tries to put on a brave face. Terry, you had some bloke trying to kick down your door the other day. Yeah, you reckon he's a martial arts expert, but I reckon he couldn't box butter down Western Star. <laughs> but Terry's not as young as he used to be, and he's worried for his safety going forward. Because when they go mental, they get the strength of ten men. And you're playing with dynamite. Many of the tenants causing problems at housing commissions across the country are battling conditions like schizophrenia and other mental health issues. But Terry says more protection should be put in place by the Department of Housing so residents don't have to live alongside these troubled tenants. I'm a human being like you. We've both got emotions and feelings. Why should we be discriminated against? And they think we're picking on them, they're picking on us. That's the truth. It's just not fair. 
as if to highlight just how dangerous some public housing tenants can be while we were filming with Terry. Can I ask what you're doing here? Police arrived, urging us to leave the estate, saying our safety was at risk and our cameras could aggravate the violent tenants. Here, a man who appears to be under the influence of drugs talks to himself on the street, wearing just his underwear. He bends over, looking for something on the ground. Walking backwards, he appears disorientated as he moves towards the bin. The man takes out the garbage bag and yells to himself before putting the garbage back in the bin. What's he doing? He runs back and forth. What on earth must be going on inside his head? These public housing tenants brawl regularly. Helen says she's constantly being terrorised by her out-of-control neighbours. I've turned into a nervous wreck. It's absolutely ridiculous. I can't... I'm too scared to sleep at night. Like Terry, she believes her family's safety shouldn't be compromised because neighbouring tenants suffer mental illness. Society has to live with mental illness people because that's how you made it to be. Well, we accept it, but... Something should be done if you see that they have gone beyond a joke and they are liable to hurt anybody. Back in this Sydney Housing Commission tower, residents often try and destroy CCTV cameras. Police are regular visitors and innocent tenants like Owen Roberts are living in a state of anxiety. My door's been kicked in three times, been robbed. I've had my wallet, keys, phone... Everything stolen, basically. But it appears the New South Wales government is pulling out all stops to try and improve security in the Northcote housing estate. We've uh, already done uh, similar upgrades in Waterloo and in Redfern, and that's produced uh, a quite impressive reduction in antisocial behaviour. Prue Goward is the Minister for Social Housing. She says more lighting is being installed, security guards will now patrol 24-7, and a new security booth has been introduced to control access to the site. The new concierge facility that uh, means we can monitor lift access and monitor where people move in the building uh, we think will be a huge benefit to tenants who have already welcomed it. These investments are difficult. The work has been, of course, difficult. We're still betting it in, but it's really important that we do it and uh, I know that tenants are very happy with what we've done. As for Melbourne public tenants like Helen and Terry, fear will remain a way of life for the time being. But you can bet they'll battle through. They'll keep fighting until they can finally find peace. Because I take pride in the place. This is my home. This is where I've got to live. I'm not going to live in a crap hole. <laughs>